Hello and welcome to our uh, next video in Ask the Experts. So we are taking up the most trending and search queries online pertaining to the cybersecurity industry which is submitted by you and other professionals, like-minded professionals across the world. So this particular series is dedicated to the differences in the latest version of PCI DSS 4.0 and the earlier version 3.2.1 now 3.2.1 as you're aware is still active it's not like it's been uh, it's taken off so uh, what is really required by and requested by many people is what are the differences on a requirement basis between these two standards so to, we have already covered the differences between 3.2.1 and 4.0 in the earlier uh, video for requirement one this video is for the summary of changes for requirement number two and before we head to the topic and jump right into it I would really uh, encourage you to subscribe to our channel our YouTube channel you can see the link on the screen and on this channel we have got content across the board it is PCI DSS, PCI SSR, PCI PIN, PA DSS there is SOC 1, SOC 2, SOC 3, HIPAA, GDPR, MAS, DRM, NCA, ECC, SAMA you name it we have it literally speaking we are one of the most visited uh, YouTube channel for these subjects on the internet and uh, you, you can see the link to subscribe and before we uh, we move on also request you to click on the bell icon so get notified on the new updates or uploads that we make which is very often we I'm sure that we make at least say one video a week or something that gets uploaded every week so be there and be a part of the action so today's video is of the summary of changes for from version 3.2.1 to 4.0 and this video is for requirement number two if you have missed requirement number one you can see the link on the screen do visit it do see it before we move here all right and uh, so requirement number two uh, it is a summary of the changes and we'll get into it now as we move ahead and now requirement number two of 3.2.1 it, it spoke about do not use vendor supplied defaults for system passwords and other security parameters now this has now been renamed to something more pertinent I should say and it's now called as apply secure configuration to all system components see I'm a, I'm a QSA myself and I have always seen that as a very small thing you know because you're just talking about changing the vendor defaults and vendor passwords and in the changing arena of uh, the cyber security and uh, you know the new vectors of risk coming in this becomes like a major issue and so this requirement has been renamed to be applicable for all security configuration controls and make them more flexible now this requirement doesn't just emphasize on default values but also focuses on the removal or deletion of unnecessary software services functions and accounts now it is also to be understood and emphasized that the requirement applies not only to traditional systems but also to other systems that can be accessible to a cloud my dear friends this is like a new thing in the earlier up till version 3 or 2.1 there is barely if at all any relevance to the cloud and the changing paradigm with it but now thankfully with version 4 uh, the focus is now shifting to the cloud also so the changes introduced in requirement 2 of PCI DSS 4.0 is much more detailed with the requirement of 2.1 it covers all the processes and mechanisms for applying secure configuration to all system comp components and I would request you to underline the word all it's not just firewalls and routers and servers that's what the focus was typically in the earlier version but here the systems have changed so here the requirement 2.1.1 speaks about establishing policies and operational procedures specified in requirement number 2 and then documenting the same now the next control that is in 2.1.2 it covers detailed roles and responsibilities so performing the activities in the requirement to assign they have to precise now across all requirements my friends the requirement 1 to 12 of PCI DSS there was earlier uh, you know not that clarity on who's supposed to be doing what but across the board now with PCI DSS 4 they have made uh, details on uh, you know the roles and responsibility to be made very clear 
Now 2.2.1 it speaks about this is another change which is required a default secure configuration standards for all system components including cloud systems. Now this was totally ignored up till 3.2.1 so whether it is AWS or you are using GCP or whether you are using Azure or your own native cloud systems you need to have secure configuration standards for them too. So here and this is a welcome chain in 2.2.2 when the default accounts are allowed provided default passwords is changed because I'm sure that you must have seen it in case you know you have been through multiple cycles as a company we have worked on you know numerous maybe uh, hundreds of companies for PCI DSS and you have seen systems databases and all where you cannot change the, the default accounts for example uh, can you remove or uh, you know the the root user ID in, in a Linux based system or a Unix based system or in a MySQL, you can't. The best you can do is change the password. So this, uh, you know, this used to look really odd when we were doing the assessment, but now thankfully with 2.2.2, they have made this a very viable change. And the second thing is there is a major change from 3.2.1 is that earlier default accounts simply had to be removed. But what if those def accounts had to be uh, made a part of an was already a part of an existing system that cannot be changed compensating uh, con control worksheet CCW uh, You have to fill up and explain why and how it's been litigated But that is now being taken care of in this new version of 4.0. So that's a thankful change and now the uh, you know there was this only one control in requirement number 2.2.3 .2 uh, which speaks about primary function only one primary function it suggested like different security parameters, security levels in the same system as long as they are segregated and they are all segregated to the same level as one with the highest security level. So earlier speaking, um, you know, th there was there that one system can only have one primary system. But in 4.0, it is like you can have it, but as long as they are all secured to the same level with the highest security level possible. Now in version 3.2.1 was requirement number 2.2.2 .2 or 2.2.3 talks about only enabling the necessary services, protocols, demons, etc. as required for the function of the system and implementation of additional security feature for any required services, protocols or demons that are considered to be insecure. But now in version in requirement number 2.2.4 or 4.0, this requirement is expanded by, by adding a requirement to remove or disable all unnecessary functionality that is in requirement number 2.2.4 and then this gets further justified and adding uh, additional controls for those that are considered as insecure so in that case uh, even if you are having insecure services in your system or protocols or demons you can further have it but you need to have uh, additional controls to fortify them or secure them the next point is PCI DSS 3.2.1 and 4.0 both mentions about the need to encrypt all non-console administrative access using strong cryptography. By non-console, I'm sure that you're aware, non-console simply means that if you're not working on the system directly, like sitting on the server directly, but work, but you know, logging on remotely using SSH or uh, some remote admin tools, that's what it means. So, uh, but however, in PCI DSS 4.0, this requirement is expanded to include an applicability note mentioning the inclusion of not just traditional or browser-based administrative interface but also access through APIs. So it, this, uh, this requirement is expanded to even include APIs that even the API access has to be encrypted. It cannot just be like if you are logging in using a remote admin tool so that needs to be encrypted but AP APIs can be decrypted. Uh, can be working in any manner that they want so that thing has been plugged which is a great welcome note and then in PCI uh, DSS requirement 3.2.1 uh, in PCI DSS 3.2.1 requirement 2.1.1 it talks about secure configuration of wireless environments which has now been expanded in PCI DSS 4.0 requirement 2.3.1 wherein additional con uh, controls are, are added to the pro process of secure configuration of wireless environments including changing of the encryption keys of wireless networks transmitting card data or connected to the CDE. So when a person with knowledge of the key leaves a company or if the key is compromised or suspected then the keys can get uh, needs to get changed. So uh, th this is a welcome change because wireless of course it was frowned upon uh, uh, in a in a card data environment uh, 
uh, in the previous version 3 to 1 but in uh, 4.0 now this has been made more inclusive but additional controls ha have been recommended and mandated for securing the card environment and then finally the component to maintain an inventory of system components that are in scope of PCI DSS for PCI DSS so in requirement 2.4 uh, you know this requirement was there in 3.2.1 version 3.2.1 and this is moved and added to the requirement 12 of PCI DSS 4.0 in alignment with the requirement objective actually uh, you know I've been at QSA for many many years now more than a decade and uh, I always used to wonder why is this requirement over here because this is all a part of policy and requirement number 12 of PCI DSS to uh, PCI DSS is more about the policy procedure documentation so how is maintaining an inventory of system components in scope in requirement 2.4 and now that thing has got sorted out thankfully in PCI DSS 4.0 so th with this uh, you know the, the number of changes in this requirement is not very high so with this we end our informative session on PCI DSS requirement 2 with the summary of changes from 3 to 1 to 4.0 explained and now I really hope this video was useful to you and clears all your doubts in case you have any uh, queries please do put it down in the comment section below and we will get uh, right back to you and to learn more about the changes in the new uh, uh, in requirements 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Please do keep watching our channel. Do subscribe and click on the bell icon for this. And the next video I'll be uh, covering requirement 3. And uh, of course, if you have any queries pertaining to uh, any further uh, requirements in the, uh, you know requirement 1 or requirement 2 so far, do drop in a line to us on ask us at vistainfosec.com or you can write to us at info at vistainfosec.com and we would be more than happy to help you. So uh, with that note, take care and bye-bye. See you soon.